it's Vanessa from Crafty Gemini Creates and today I'm here with a fun and quick crafty project for you to try out. We are going to be making these really cute little fabric flowers. I'm going to show you how to put one on a bobby pin like I have here so it can clip into hairstyles. You can also add them to some fold over elastic and use them on little baby headbands and you can use them for a ton of other different things too. I sometimes like to use them to embellish the top of the gift wrapping. If I wrap something up with some fun kind of eco-friendly paper with stamps and have the kids jump in on it, it's a great way to use up your scraps and give somebody a cute handmade gift. Now to make the fabric flowers, we are gonna be working with our regular quilting cottons. I have some gorgeous fabrics here that we're using. And then the main product in this game is called Tyrial Magic. It's a product, I call it, it's kind of like starch to the 10th power, really. It's gonna stiffen up your fabric really nice and stiff so that you can cut it. It reduces the fraying on the edges so you don't have to worry about the fabric being kind of limp and really drapey. This helps us get it more kind of like to a paper shape. Imagine it was stabilized with something behind it, except in this case, it doesn't have anything. So you can spray this stuff on any start, um, on any fabric scraps, excuse me. Now let me show you the difference. This is a 10 inch by 10 inch square from this Blueberry Park fabric that hasn't had anything sprayed on it. So you can see how it drapes and it kind of just flops all over the place. Here I have a, uh, another square from the same collection that I already sprayed with the Tyrial Magic. And you can see, even when I turn, it's almost like it's cardstock. So if you get your creative juices flowing, you can probably start to imagine all the different types of things that you can make with stiffened up fabric like this. Now it's important to note that this stuff washes out. So this is fun to use for these type of flowers and things that are not really gonna get washed. If it is gonna get washed, then you may wanna look at a different option. But if you're gonna be making three dimensional type of things that are for, more for decorative purposes, you're gonna to wanna to use this Terial Magic. Now aside from that, we're also gonna be using my favorite non-toxic water-based craft glue, and this is called the Ultimate. Remember, we always include a link in the description box below this video on where you can find all the fabrics, the materials, and these special products that I use in the tutorials for you. So let's set that there for now. Let me show you how this works. So the manufacturer recommends that you soak it really good. The more of the product that you spray into the fabric, the stiffer it's gonna get. I am a little bit impatient, so I don't tend to soak it and then kind of let it air dry, and then they tell you to go back and press it. What I do, I kind of use it as a starch. And so I'll just spritz the fabric a little bit with it, kind of fold it in there, kind of press it into the fabric. And as long as it's not pooled on top of the fabric and it's like really drippy and stuff like that, you should be fine to just hit it with your hot, dry iron at this point. So I'll starch it like that. Not starch it, but Terial Magic, it's kind of a stiffer version of a starch, right? Once I see that it's dried, you can see significantly stiffer already. The stiffer you want it, the more you spray. So once I spray a little bit, hit it with the iron and it dries, if I want it a little stiffer, just go back, spritz it again, and then hit it again with the iron. Just make sure you don't have any of the product just pooled on top, because then it'll stick to your iron. and dry it again, okay? And so that's the way that I prefer to use it because when I'm using it for quickie craft projects like this, I just wanna get it done and move on to my project, all right? So you're gonna prepare whatever fabric pieces you're using. This little five inch square comes from a collection I'm using called Transformation by Contempo. And I like it because it has really bright colors and they work out really well for doing a variety of flowers, okay? So you can use them with the five inch squares or the 10 inch squares. I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do it. I'll start off with the five inch square. Again, a great scrap buster. So if you have any little orphan squares around, this is a great way to use them up. I'm gonna split this square, it measures five inches, and I'm gonna split it at two and a half inches, so right down the middle. Now we have two strips that measure two and a half inches by five. Now because this square is a little bit smaller, you're going to create the flower, but you're gonna make it in two halves. So this is half of the charm, the little five inch square. You see how I did that? I'm gonna show you how to cut it out and then how to put it together and ruffle it up so you get kind of those petals created. So here's how it works. And I'm gonna do it on this one so you can see the other half of it. You're gonna take it, lay it vertically in front of you, fold it in half, fold it in half again. And there's no actual template piece, you can just wing it. Remember, there's no two flowers that are the same. So feel confident enough to go in there. Now let me show you where I'm gonna cut. Up from this bottom edge, about half of an inch, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna cut in here a curve, and I'm gonna cut off the end again about half of an inch there. So maybe it'll help if I draw it out. Because I know sometimes people don't feel comfortable cutting into the fabric just to eyeball it, but trust me, you won't mess it up. 
something like that, okay? So we come in here, cut right through all the layers, Now it's important, don't cut all the way through because this is the look you want to get. When we open it up, here we have our four petals. Now let's gather them up. You can see it's the same thing, but now they start to cup in and cup around in the shape of a flower because we've gathered them. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Down here at the bottom edge, we're going to use a basting stitch, which is a basic straight stitch, but at the longest stitch length that your machine does. So on this one, I think it goes up to five millimeters. I'll set it to that. We're going to start off with a long tail. I'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to start off with a tail here and actually I'm going to stitch through a sample piece of fabric so that I can bring up that bobbin thread and give myself a tail. All right, so you want to start off with a tail of both your top thread and bobbin thread. You see how I have that there? I'm going to set this to a basting stitch. So there we go. Five millimeters is the highest it goes. And I'm just stitching it about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom edge. You don't want to back stitch at all and you don't want to cut your threads close. There's my last stitch. I'm going to just put the needle up and I'm going to pull it out so that I give myself a tail on that end as well. So let's head over here. Here's what we have. We have long tails on both ends. You want to reach down and grab the bobbin thread. And I'm using, it's important to note too, the type of thread that I'm using here. This is a 40 weight cotton. The thinner the thread you use, the more likely it will break off of just one basting line like this. But here's what I find. If I just hold onto the thread and I scoot the fabric over the thread, I have less likelihood to break the thread. If you pull on the thread, you're probably going to break it because remember, the fabric has now been stiffened and it's going to be a little bit tougher to uh, pull that thread and those stitches right through it. I'll do about halfway so that I don't stress that thread, I'll come to the other side and do the other half, okay? And just scoot it, be careful with it. If you pull it, it's not the end of the world, just pull all this, the thread out and redo it. You can see how nicely that looks. It's all cupped over. I don't cut or tie or do anything with these threads yet. What I do is I'll come here, layer these two guys together, okay? And you can cut them a little bit, probably just so you all can see a little bit better. And we'll cut those threads off later, but I'm gonna layer it like that to do it, you're gonna add a little dab of the crafter's glue. This stuff is amazing to stitch a fabric on fabric, okay? So just a little bit, and you actually don't even need that much. That's just what came out of the nozzle there. But you can see, sometimes what I do is I just bring a little glue to the surface and just tap it, just like that. You really don't need much at all. And you can just hold it in place for a few seconds, and there you go then what I do is generally layer up these, these uh, petals. So let me show you how to do one. Remember that we did this one out of the five inch square, cut up another one, you can layer them up on top of each other. What I like to do with the 10 inch squares though is cut longer strips so that I get larger petals and more in one round. So let me show you how to do that. I will take the 10 inch square that's already been stiffened up with the Terial Magic and cut it at two and a half inches. Cut a two and a half inch by 10 inch strip right off of here. We'll do the same thing to cut out those little um, humps of the petals, okay? So fold it in half, fold it in half again, and I'll fold it in half one more time. And again, freehand cut. Okay, and you can see how many you end up with here. Okay, so again, do your basting line here and you're gonna gather this. And this, because it's so many more, it's gonna gather up into one this big. So instead of having to put together those two halves, we now have the full 10 inch strip gathered up. So here, a little dab of glue. and just stick it right into place. All right, so once you have some of these, you can see how I start to layer them up. What I tend to do, and I'll probably show you with this one, is you just want to have a little foundation for the flowers to sit on because they all have a hole in the middle, okay? So get some another little scrap piece of fabric, okay? I like to put it so that the pretty side of the fabric is facing out so that when I look at it, I see something prettier than just the back side of the fabric, but you can do it either way. Again, the glue, just a little. You don't need much at all and lay it right on top. 
okay? And then you would take your other one, where is it? Here it is. This one, I only folded it twice, so let me show you that. We cut another strip, and once, this is another little note, something that I tend to do. We cut the two and a half inch strip for the bottom one. I like to make the ones that I layer on top a little bit smaller. So the width of the strip, you can adjust it. The next one can be one and three quarters wide. And that's just gonna give you a little bit smaller petals. So, I mean, this is such a crafty project. You can customize it any way. You can get super creative and make all different types of flowers. But I thought I'd just show you all a simple way to do it. Now, if we fold it in half and fold it in half again, you can see that the ones that you're going to get are going to be a different shape because it's not quite as small as if we refolded it again. So that's kind of how you get these bigger ones, okay? So just play around with the different size petals that you want to get. Layer them up. I put the backing piece here so it has a foundation to sit on. I would glue here, stick the next one on top, all right? And then for the center, you can see it still has a hole. You can do whatever you want to cover it up. If you have a really large button that you want to stitch there, I usually will just cut another little scrap piece and stick it there on top, the same way that we did on the bottom. And actually at this point, let me show you how to add it to a bobby pin. So you can make a little hair clip just like the one that I have here to slip on into any hairdo. For kids, adults, anything. I think this really is a cute way to do it. So I have a little piece cut out here from the same coordinating ma fabric that's been hit with the Terial Magic. I'm just going to cut out a little circle or oval, whatever you want. I just need something that's going to go over the bobby pin and glue down onto the other fabric. Now the Terial Magic does, I mean, not the Terial Magic, the glue, the Ultimate Crafters glue, does glue fabric to fabric, fabric to plastic, and even to metal. So I'm going to use it here to attach it to everything, the metal and the fabric piece. So, I'm going to put some glue right here, get you guys to see it a little better. Lay your bobby pin where you want it. I'm going to slip this through the bobby pin. Just like that. Hold it in place. And what I tend to do is kind of just press on it a little bit, push it all the way in there, and just push my nail on the sides of the bobby pin. So the glue on that fabric can really stick to the fabric that's underneath it and hold it in place. The cure time for this is about 24 hours, but I find that even in a few hours, you can already start to use it because it's still attaching the fabric to the fabric that's there. And then you're ready to use it as a little hair clip. So another option is to glue it to some fold over elastic. And I'll show you a really quick way of making this headband. Measure around your head or a child's head, cut this to size say 12 inches or so for a little kid. All you do is match it up end to end and zigzag stitch right there. That'll keep it in place and right where the zigzag stitch is you would attach your flower and you can notice what I did back here similar to how we did it with the bobby pin. I went ahead and over on the other side just in case sometimes little kids will complain about the edge being a little bulky or scratchy. Go ahead and add another piece of fabric to the back side to further secure it in place. And for the center here, you probably noticed I have a little twisted little bud in the center. You can do that with rolling up the fabric. You can add a button. You can embellish these really any way that you want to. And after you give this project a try, remember to take some pictures. We'd love to see pictures of your fabric flowers posted to the Crafty Gemini Creates Facebook page. Remember, if you're looking for the supplies and materials we used in the video, go ahead and click open the description box below. If you enjoyed the fabric flower tutorial, Hit the video with a thumbs up below and remember to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on any of my future video tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.